I'm your host with the most, Sir William Wells, and this is a brand new segment on my YouTube channel that I like to call... Alright, so Will It Golf is all about me reviewing stuff like movies, theater, video games, TV shows, and mainstream products that claim to be gothic to determine whether or not it meets our gothic community's very high standards and to prove once and for all, will it goth? Or just mainstream trash trying to rip off our style once again. First up, Beetlejuice. This iconic movie has been around for 31, that's right, count them, 31 years. Back in my day, this is what here was called a videotape cassette. Uh -huh. But Beetlejuice the movie isn't on trial today. No, this Tim Burton masterpiece will forever hold its place as a iconic gothic film. However, what is on trial here is something called Beetlejuice, the Broadway musical. Oh, I really do love to hear that sound. I know, I know. When I first heard about this, I had immediately the same reaction. How dare they besmirch the name that is Beetlejuice? But you see, my French restaurant is literally two blocks away from the Winter Garden Theater where Beetlejuice is playing. And I'd walk by it every single day. But the more I heard about it, and the more images I saw, I became intrigued and wanted to find out what all the fuss was about. So with the help of a good friend, Cindy Sabilski, who is also a theater producer and theater writer, if you want to see her in-depth review, check the link in the description below for her article on stagebiz.com. So as I was saying, with the help of Cindy, we managed to get two tickets for a Saturday matinee to discover just how good or how horrible Beetlejuice the musical was going to be. So here comes the big day, Saturday, 2 p.m. And I have to admit, as soon as we walk into the theater, past the doors, the entire theater is lit beautifully with purple and green light bulbs in the chandeliers all throughout the theater. This gives the theater a very haunted, eerie feeling. Before the curtain even goes up, the mood is set. The first thing you need to understand, you have to separate your mind between the movie and the Broadway musical. You will be doing yourself a vast disservice if you don't, right off the get-go. I promise you. It's showtime! Hi! I'll be your guide! I'll be your G-U-I-D-E to the other side! The first scene is actually the funeral of Lydia's mother. Now, for most theater goers, opening up on a very somber scene, such as a funeral, can be a little bit daunting. Everybody's in funeral attire, there's parasols, it's very gloomy, but for goths, we can't ask for better. It's wonderful. Mwah. Then, we suddenly get introduced to Beetlejuice, who is basically gonna serve as the narrator. He starts off by breaking the fourth wall, and talking directly to the audience to just set the groundwork that what the audience is about to experience is literally a show about death. Welcome to a show about death! Next, Beetlejuice introduces us to the Maitlands, Barbara and Adam, who are living in their picture-perfect, quaint, mundane, ugh, suburban home. And they are as vanilla as they come. I mean, day crawler times a thousand. What's interesting in this Broadway musical, I, I found quite odd but yet refreshing, is that it takes its time to develop each of the main characters. From Beetlejuice, Lydia, Lydia's father, Delia, Adam and Barbara, and so forth. I mean, Beetlejuice the movie itself is only 92 minutes long, barely an hour and a half. For example, Lydia's motivation and her drive is to reconnect with her dead mother. For her, everything just kind of stopped when her mother died, and she trying to fill that hole in her life. And this drives her. Because I myself am strange and unusual. The Maitlands, they each pine to start a family, to have children. But of course, being dead, that never came to fruition. Now they just have to deal with the fact that there's this new family that moved into their house and they don't want to let go. Also because they don't know how to cross over to the other side. No thanks to Beetlejuice actually stealing the handbook for the recently deceased. He's a trickster that way. Speaking of which, we also learn a little bit more about Beetlejuice himself. He's not just some bio-exorcist, con man, quirky guy. He's actually got issues. 
deeper issues and loneliness, the actual the issue of loneliness becomes a big theme throughout this musical. And then you have Lydia's father and Delia, who at this point are not married yet. This actually takes a very interesting course. You see, without giving away too many spoilers, Lydia also has to come to grips about having a new mom. And this entire inner dilemma basically unfolds in front of the audience's eyes, which is something the movie definitely did not do. The one major critique I will say, though, is the character of Ortho was not as predominant as uh, in the movie. He comes in after after intermission, actually. You only hear of him throughout the first act, and he only appears in the second act. It's unfortunate that the writers didn't choose to make him more predominant, and he's not even the interior decorator. He's uh, just known as a Delia's guru. That's the only thing that kind of irritated me. It really does take a kind of another turn from the movie, but then again, do not fixate on the movie. I'm bad at it too. Shame. Don't do that. And so I'm not really going to get into much more of the plot because I don't want to spoil this for you. But I will say that the actors in this are wonderful. First you have Alec Brightman as the role of Beetlejuice. He, interestingly enough, played the Jack Black role from School of Rock in the musical production that was there right before Beetlejuice. So he's no stranger to the Winter Garden Theater and he seems really at ease there. He's having a grand time. He's having really fun with the character. He's all over the place. Where he gets his energy from, I will never know. But it's like running a marathon just to keep up with him. The energy level is through the roof. It's here, there, it's all over the place. Next, we have Sophia and Caruso in the role of Lydia. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting her very briefly about three years ago at an event. And she was only, I think, about 14 at the time. But let me tell you something. Remember her name because she's going to become a sensational Broadway star. Triple threat. And she really makes the Lydia character her own. It's not Winona Ryder. It's completely different. Generally, generally has captured that goth essence, in my opinion. Okay, I was quickly point out that by the time I'm recording this, they have announced uh, the Tony Award nominations. And believe it or not, Beetlejuice the Musical has earned themselves eight, that's right, eight nominations. Best Musical, how can you top that? You also have Alex Brightman for Best Male Role in a Musical. You have Scott Brown and Anthony King for Best Book of a Musical, Script. Which deserves the nod because the jokes are, they're, they're so fast and they're so geared toward a gothic audience, nonstop make fun of mundanes and day crawlers. It's simply just a knee slapper the entire ride. You have William Ivy Long for best costume design, which there are so many fashions and costume changes throughout this entire Broadway musical. It's phenomenal. You'd want to wear most of these clothes, especially I, Lydia's wardrobe is, uh, again, phenomenal. Then you have Kevin Posner, Peter Negrini for best lighting design. Again, the lighting from the moment you step foot into the theater to the moment you leave the theater is incredible. What they do with the lights, I was mesmerized by how many light changes and how many cues there are for everything that's going on and video projection. How they get away with so much dynamic in such a confined space as the Winter Garden Theater, it's phenomenal. You have David Corrins for best scenic design. Just like the lighting design, there are so much clever staging and the sets, it's just, it takes you from the living room to the attic to the outside of the house. It's just how this ballet of scenic design is flawless. Then you have Eddie Perfect for best original score. Now the music, it's, you know, it's, it's not there to create a pop single that's going to hit the top 10 on the billboard charts. No, it serves as the driving force behind the story. It adds to the story. It doesn't break away. This is not a jukebox musical like, like all the Motown productions and, and the Jersey Boys or things of that nature. No, the music actually embellishes the book and the story. And finally, you have Peter Hylensky for best sound design. The way that they use sound and lights and the sets, everything, and then the characters, 
and then the actors all together create this bubble of alternate reality that you were sucked into for those two and a half hours. It's quite spectacular as all of these elements are put together to create an amazing, amazing piece of musical theater. In my opinion, yeah, they well deserve those Tonys. So now, with that said, it's time to figure out Yes! This is so goth. This production is simply amazing. You have to go see it. You will simply fall in love with this production. I myself would love to go see it two or three more times if I can. If you are in the New York City area, do not, I repeat, do not miss this production. Oh, and if you do go to the show, be sure to say hi to Amy. She works at the theater there. Hi, Amy. She's the best. If you can't get to New York City to see this show, Keep an eye out on my website, newgothcity.com. I will be listing their U.S. tour dates. Find a theater near you. So that's it for the first episode of Will It Goth? We already got a winner. Stamp of approval of this one. You wanna hear us hear that sound?